Welcome back to the show. Well, it is Canada Day week. This is one of my most favorite days of the year, one of our family's most favorite days and weeks of the year. And to celebrate on the show this week, we are diving back deep into, I believe it was from our second season, I did an interview with Paul Richardson from the Bible League Canada on Canada's rich Christian heritage. So we wanted to show some clips of that interview with you today. But before that, I have an exciting announcement. With me is Art Lucier to talk about something that's launched on Canada Day, an online national prayer room for our nation and the next National Day of Prayer. So without further delay, happy Canada Day and let's get to it. Well, this is so exciting. We are landing in Canada Day. We Canada Day is on Wednesday, but we're celebrating for a whole week here at Faithteen.tv. There are some exciting things happening this week. And right uh, with me right now to talk about it was Art Lucier from Harvest Ministries International and the Battle for Canada. Thanks for joining me, Art. Always a pleasure, Faithteen. Always. Well, you love Canada. We love Canada. That's why I'm smiling so much. I'm, I, this is one of my favorite weeks of the year. Uh, but there's something happening this week uh, called the National Day of Prayer. It's going to be a full eight hours of prayer fasting for Canada. And we're also, or you're also going to be launching a 24-7 online prayer room for Canada. It's going to be running for a full year. Tell our viewers about it and how they can get involved. Well, it was a high and lofty initiative, but we felt the Lord say, do it. We started two months ago. It's come together at what, if you're seeing this video right now, just before Canada Day, there might be a spot or two left on the wall, but out of the 168 hours, we have a close to 168 teams that are going to be a part of a 24 seven virtual prayer room that are going to pray for four main pillars starting July 1st. Uh, ending of abortion, godly government, revival and reformation in the nation, and then praying for every region of Canada. Fateen, this is a sea to sea, north to south initiative. We've di divvied up Canada into eight regions. We have eight leaders, and they all have watchmen under them. And so, if like when Pat Francis got a hold of me, she goes, Well, what would be my region? Ontario, I said, No, well, you're GTA. I'm Kelowna. So, when, when it's my prayer hour, I'm going to be praying for the Okanagan region. And so when my kids are on their prayer hour, prayer hour they're praying for Kinemet. We're going to hit every region in the nation for, for a full year and just see what things look like in a year from now. Well, that's amazing. So you mentioned that there's people that are leading the prayer times. How about people that just want to participate? Can anyone who's watching this, can they get on their computer? Can they pick up a phone, dial a number, and actually join in with this 24-7 prayer room? Okay, so... Right after the National Day of Prayer, which we're going to talk to you about, on Canada Day, we're going to be launching for the public the Canadian Firewall. You're going to go to www.canadianfirewall.ca. You're going to have a link to the wall. And it's going to look just like me and Fateen here right now praying. There might be three people, five people, ten people, every hour on the hour. This is anyone can watch Fateen. They can even chat. They can throw their prayer requests in there. They're not necessarily going to get on with their video on their mic, but they're going to see it. Are you bored? Is there nothing on Netflix? Like, can you, maybe you don't sleep at night really well. Click the link. Get on the firewall. Come and pray with us. It's open for everyone. It's not hidden. This is, um, this is for everyone. That's amazing. And so it's going to be launched on Wednesday, July the 1st, right after the National Day of Prayer. Okay, so this is going to be uh, five hours specifically focused on praying for Canada. Three yeah. hours prior to that, different global voices, uh, Cindy Jacobs, Rick Ridings, Dr. Pat Francis will be bringing some exhortation. Where can people find out about the National Day of Prayer and register for that? Yeah, so you do need to register for this. Most of you are, this is not new to you. Fateen's done a few of these already. They've been just amazing to bring the nation together. It's nationaldayofprayer.ca. Nationaldayofprayer.ca. You need to register. You'll get a link and you'll be able to see for eight hours global leaders for the first three hours, like Fateen said. Pat Francis, a Canadian, will be leading the global for three hours, handing it over to our team to lead for the next five hours. So that's 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time to 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, uh, eight hours of National Day of Prayer. And you'll, you'll see, all, you'll, you'll hear all about it, that the, uh, even the prayer wall during your National Day of Prayer and get, be able to join in with us. So that's nationaldayofprayer.ca. Register there. 
Amazing. And so we're going to have the National Day of Prayer. And then right when that closes, the firewall opens up and we're going to be praying 24-7 for Canada. Wow. Art, in just in a sentence, what are you expecting as the church in Canada comes together to pray for a full year 24-7? I believe a lot of our prayers that we have prayed are going to get answered in the future. Like, I believe a lot of the prayers that we're praying now for the ending of abortion, godly government, revival, I believe it's on our doorstep. I believe this is one solid good push near the end to see this happen, to see our prayers come to pass. That's what I truly believe, Faith Dean. Amazing. I really do. Amazing. So nationaldayofprayer.ca, firewall, canadianfirewall.ca or .com? Yeah, no, .ca, canadianfirewall.ca. Okay. In, in, in fact, if you're watching this, there might be a couple hours left on the wall. Go there and see and join us. We don't want any gaps on the wall. So join. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Art Lucy, for mobilizing 24-7 prayer for Canada. I know it's going to make a huge difference. We believe so, Faitine. God answers prayer. Paul Richardson is the president of the Bible League Canada, which works in over 40 nations to raise up local leaders with Bible literacy to plant churches. For Canada's 150th, Paul and his team put emphasis on Canada and produced an amazing book called One Dominion, which outlines our rich faith heritage. He is with us today to discuss our history and just how the Bible has impacted it. I'm looking forward to this inspiring discussion. So without further delay, let's get to it. George Etienne Cartier and John A. Macdonald formed an alliance with the goal to persuade the British North American colonies that the time was ripe to unite. In 1864, leaders from all the colonies met in Charlottetown where they proposed forming a national confederation. In his morning devotions, Leonard Tilley, the premier of New Brunswick, read Psalm 72. He shall have dominion from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. Tilly thought, what a splendid name to give Canada. The Fathers of Confederation agreed. On July 1st, 1867, the British North American Act uniting Upper and Lower Canada, New Brunswick and Nova Scotia was established by royal proclamation, the Dominion of Canada was born. Paul Richardson from Bible League Canada, president of Bible League Canada. It's such an honor to have you in studio today. And I have to admit, this uh, topic that we're going to talk about today and the book that you guys produced, One Dominion here, kind of wrecked me. You know, this is like, this is intense stuff, you know, in a good way. And so um, share with us a little bit about what you do with Bible League Canada, first of all, and then let's talk about this book. Sure, very simply, we want to see God's word placed in people's hands mm. so God's spirit can put it in their hearts and we want to see a church planted in their neighborhood. Mm. And out of that community of faith comes transformation in villages and in communities. It's how Canada was formed. We want to see the same thing happen in other nations. And you're working about 40 nations right now. That's right. Is Canada one of those 40 or in addition to? It's 43 counting Canada. Oh, 43 counting Canada, great. So talk to us about this book. Give us a, a crash course and then share some stories. Sure. We we had the heart uh, a couple of years ago to tell the story about our foundation as a nation, but also the journey that's created us as a nation. We were one of the best nations on the planet. Every index tells and speaks to that. Mm -hmm. And so we want to tell the story that maybe hasn't been told recently about how uh, the foundation of our nation is God and his word. Mm -hmm. And that's helped create this great nation that we're part of now. And I want to say something. I'm Gen X. Okay. So I'm 44 this year, but I didn't hear any of this for the first 20 years of my life. Mm. I had no idea that Canada had like a rich faith heritage. Well, it's the foundation that has built us, but also as people were transformed by God's word, mm. the journey that they were on has helped form the nation that we have here today as well. So tell us some of those stories. Yeah, well, there, there's so many. It's almost every sector. And it, it starts with someone who first is transformed in their own heart, and then God used them to help form the nation that we enjoy today. Like there's uh, Emily Murphy, 
hmm. where maybe we don't know too much about her, but she was the first female magistrate in the British Empire. And that came out of a heart that wanted to see women who were uh, undergoing great uh, trauma when their husbands left them. And because they weren't persons, they didn't have any recourse for land. They couldn't own land. And so she said, I want to change that. So she helped raise legislation in Canada hmm. to help combat that. And then she says, well, someone needs to be a, a magistrate to help. So she became the first woman magistrate. Well, it was not long the inevitable happened where some person in court says, well, your rulings aren't valid because you're not a person. Mm. And that went all through the court system, right up to the Privy Council in, in the United Kingdom. And at, and at that point, it was deemed, said, no, women are persons. And that was one of the final straws, together with the Fantastic Five, one of the final straws to, to, to allow women to be seen as persons and with that, the vote. But it came out of a heart that, had, that was transformed by God's word. That's in the legislative system. But what about in our healthcare system? Hmm. Tommy Douglas voted one of the best Canadians of all time. He's known for helping to start our healthcare system in Canada. And he was a pastor. It came out of a pastor's heart. Right? Yes, in Saskatchewan in the Depression years. Yeah. And he saw people in his province as a pastor that, that could not uh, afford uh, health care for simple things and they suffered terribly by, because of it. Mm -hmm. And so then as he got into politics, that increase in aid coming out of a heart of a pastor, coming out of a heart that was transformed by God's word, he says, I have to do something about this. And so God moved on him to bring their health care system into Canada. He was the first in the nation and has spread mm -hmm. from sea to sea in our nation now. And now we have uh, a remarkable remarkable system where people have access, no matter what the, the financial situation they are, they have access to great health care in Canada. Wow, that's huge. It that's is. Huge. Uh, what about our parliamentary system? You know, somebody said to me a while ago, they said, just think about the terms in Parliament. You've got Minister of Health, Minister of Justice, uh, Minister of Transportation, Prime Minister. Like, the, like, when people went into politics, they saw it as a ministry. And that's, that's a very Christian term. How has how's the Bible impacted Canada's government? Oh, it, it, in so many different ways, uh, where it, even in the terms, like you said, it speaks to ministers, where we're serving someone, we're serving the crown, we're serving the queen, and we recognize in, in the Commonwealth and in Canada that the, the authority does not come from heritage, it comes from God. Mm -hmm. So in our Constitution, in the Constitution Act of 1982, we added that, that God has supremacy, and so that's embedded in the very fiber of who we are as a nation. And that's actually was included uh, and added before the rule of law. Wow. So it talks about the supremacy of God and the rule of God, uh, the rule of law. But it starts first with the supremacy of God. It was also added in our national anthem in the 1980s, where we said, "God keep our land," recognizing that that the supremacy of God impacts our hearts as we sing. And it's etched in stone in the peace tower, and it's inscribed in metal in the bells, proclaiming about the supremacy of God and the and the, the value and the role that the Bible plays in transforming hearts as a foundation and as a journey to build the nation the way we are today. And I found that so intriguing because I would have thought that that stuff would have been added in like, you know, 150 years ago. But you're saying like, this is just the 80s. So this isn't like an old, old, old heritage, even like, you know, that's well, powerful. Well, the Peace Tower was, was a century ago. Yeah, yeah. But the Constitution... Const and the national anthem was very recent in our lifetime. And it's been added to make it even more secure, to make it even more pronounced so that not only is it etched in stone and written on parchment, but even as we sing the national anthem, God keep our land. It's inscribed in our hearts Glorious as nations, free, yeah. as, as nationals, that we talk about what, what God wants to do in this That's nation. amazing. That is amazing. And I remember even reading that on the bells in the Peace Tower there, it actually, doesn't it actually say glory to God in the highest? Yes. On the biggest one? So every time it rings, there's this peal that, that, that talks about, it's, it's famous because of Christmas, <laughs> but it's all across the land. It, some would say even the, the very symbol of Canada would be the Peace Tower, and, wow. the, and it's, it's right there in stone and yeah. metal in the chamber. And the Star of, of David, right? Word. So yeah. if somebody was to say, like, listen, you got to separate, like, the Bible and government, it's like, you kind of have to decimate Parliament, right? The whole center block there, because it's all over Parliament, and I'm not suggesting that anybody do that, by the way, but uh, wow, that's so, a lot of people don't know that. Mm. So that's really, really neat to share. Through The Fate Teen Show, we're tackling issues influencing our nation's future, like freedom of conscience, racism, poverty, the debt, human trafficking, abortion, democracy, and much more. If you missed a show, you can watch anytime at fateteen.tv or on YouTube. We hope to see you there.
We love Canada, and we want to see it strong for generations to come. That's why we do this show. We can't do it alone. We need your help. Unlike commercial TV, this program is 100% donor-funded. If you'd like to see more episodes produced on important issues for our nation, please consider signing up to be a monthly partner or giving a special gift today. Every gift makes a real difference, and all gifts are tax-deductible. Together, we can build a better Canada for the future. Visit fayteen.tv or call 1-866-844-0844 to donate today. Thanks for your support. Well, this 150th birthday celebration for Canada, they've gone all out to publish a book about Canada. I think it may be the finest book I've ever read about the development, the evolution of our country from its very beginnings until now. Paul Richardson, Bible League Canada. I think I would have to agree with David Maines. Oh man, it's just gets you just yeah. see, seeing that clip, hey? But he said this was could be the finest book that he's ever seen on the history of Canada, our Christian heritage. So share with us some more of your favorite stories of our Christian heritage. There's, there's so many. I know. And there's so many that aren't told today. Mm. And so we wanted to tell the story about what it is that, that Christ is doing in people's lives. And whether it's uh, McMaster that started a school in Hamilton or his niece, Elizabeth, that started Toronto Six Kid Hospital or whether it's Ryerson that helped create our uh, education system in Canada. All these people are individuals who first were being transformed by God's Word. They weren't perfect, but they're being transformed by God's Word. And then they helped form this nation that is truly remarkable in Canada. Mm -hmm. Wow. Let's talk about Canada's name, mm. because that came from a Bible verse. Tell us that story. Well, there was a constitutional conference in 1864 in Charlottetown, and the delegates from all the different colonies, the British North America, were gathering that, that previous day to determine what are we going to call this nation. They said Canada. I said, well, but there needs to be something else. And so they, they left that night, and they went back to the places where they're sleeping. And, and uh, Sir Leonard Tilley was kneeling and praying. Now, and he was the premier, right? Premier of New Brunswick, New Brunswick right. one of the key colonies hmm. and follower of Jesus Christ. And he was reading as his daily practice, reading God's word in Psalm 72. And he comes to the passage in King James, may God have dominion from sea to sea. And he got up off his knees and he, he rushed back to that conference and he says, uh, brothers, I, I know what we should recommend to the crown that we call this nation, the Dominion of Canada. And it's reported that, uh, that it was heard and accepted. And from that day, after the, the British North America Act, now called the Can Constitution Act 1867, we were, we were known as the Dominion of Canada, for God to have dominion from sea to sea. Wow. And I remember reading that story and that John A. Macdonald, who was the, the Prime Minister at the time, mm. uh, actually wrote in his own handwriting to the Queen at the time that they wanted to call Canada the Dominion of Canada, other than the United Provinces of Canada or something like that, the United Kingdom of Canada, because of that Bible verse, Psalm yeah. 72, verse 8. Yeah. How phenomenal. Now, we were talking about the Peace Tower before the break, and that scripture is also on the Peace Tower, on correct? The, on the east window, high up. May God have dominion from sea to sea. Mm. Yeah. Any other scriptures? Yeah. On the other side is where there's no vision, the people perish. Good word. And on the south window, right above it, is Psalm 72, verse 1, which talks about, about uh, the king receiving God's wisdom mm -hmm. and the king's son is righteousness. So all through the symbol of us as a nation is scripture infused in that stone. As our members of parliament are walking in, above ha them, hanging over, is this, this recognition that, that God is a dominion from sea to sea, but also we need his wisdom and we need his righteousness moving forward. Wow, powerful. So we've talked about government. We've talked about schools, we've touched on the, the healthcare system. What about business, treatment of employees, that type of thing? Yes, uh, there was uh, one uh, Premier of Ontario, I think it was, uh, Sir Oliver uh, Mowat, where he was the first one, again, transformed by God's word. He was the first one to bring workplace safety legislation into Canada wow. and also um, uh, forbidding child labor in factories, where he wanted to be uh, uh, someone who is a Christian politician and he wanted to be able to make sure that the vulnerable and the, and the ones who were uh, perhaps in danger would be cared 
cared for, what no one else would be caring for. And, and so now we have a remarkable history in Canada of how we want to make sure that there's safety and want to make sure that people who really are uh, in a disadvantaged way or vulnerable, that we want to protect them. But that came out of a heart that was first transformed by God's Word. Wow, amazing, amazing. So inspiring as well. I also remember reading about Toronto the Good. Was it Howland, uh, the mayor at the time? And, or no, Timothy Eaton, actually. He brought in, uh, you know, restricted work hours as well. Wasn't there something around that? That could be... Uh... I'm putting you on the spot here, yeah. <laughs> and me. <laughs> wow, powerful. One or two other of your favorite Christian heritage stories. Hmm. Well, uh, the first hospital in Canada mm. was Hotel Du in Montreal, mm. 1639, I think it was, 1640. Uh, and it was started by three women who first had been transformed by God's word. And they wanted to see something that was cared for and caring for the people who are ill and, and not. That hospital, interestingly, is still functioning today. Wow. Yeah, almost, what was that, 400 years later. Unbelievable. It's still functioning today. And it was born, first of all, out of someone who had a heart that was transformed by God's Word. And that was, I know I mentioned it earlier, but Elizabeth McMaster, she saw in Canada, in Toronto especially, that half of the children who died, they were dying, dying under the age of 10. Mm. And she says, we have to do something like this. So she opened up this, this home for children who were sick and she wanted to run it like a Christian household so they had Bible studies and they talked about hygiene and they brought medical care in as well. Well today that's now the Toronto Sick Kid Hospital wow. which is incredible heritage wow. but it came out of a heart that was first transformed by God's <laughs> word and then God you used keep that saying today. that. <laughs> well because Christianity so is more powerful. than checking a box exactly. on some form. It's, it's more than just a, a moniker that we say well I'm this. It, it's so, Christianity is something that truly transforms a heart, truly transform. And then that transformed heart is used by God to, to, to transform a nation or to transform a village or to transform a, a house or a neighborhood or a business. Mm -hmm. But it starts with that heart that's first changed. Yeah. And then the word becomes flesh. Yeah. It dwells amongst us. We get to be like Jesus, right? And, and bring it. That's so powerful. Now, okay. Where can people find out? Where can they get this book? Sure. Where can they find out about your work? Well, first of all, they can make a donation to the, the ministry here. and we, we and Oh, yeah, then we'll send them. But yeah. <laughs> and you can send them. Or you can visit our website, BibleLeague.ca. Okay, amazing. So again, it's a One Dominion book celebrating Canada's 150th. On the back here, it says, Canada is not a nation of one story alone, but of many stories from ordinary people and often ordinary people of faith who help form the foundations of our wonderful country. We have about a minute left. Mm. Uh, Paul, would you please just lead us in a prayer of blessing for this great nation of Canada to continue to be great. Father, we thank you for the way that you've developed us as a nation, going back over 150 years, right from the early times, as people were transformed by your word, you used them to, to bring health care, medicine, uh, labor laws, uh, protection of the vulnerable, uh, protection of children, protection of animals even. You, you started uh, universities and colleges, you started hospitals, and so started businesses that wanted to care for uh, people who are working there. And it, it came with a heart, first of all, that was transformed by your word. And then that transformed heart, you helped to use to, to form this nation to be the blessed nation it is today. Father, may that continue in heart after heart. And may we continue to see your word transforming our nation. And we thank you and we bless this nation and the leaders in it as they walk us towards that direction. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Powerful. Thank you so much, Paul. Thank you, Faith Team. Bless you. Thank you. You too. News that Christopher Columbus had discovered lands beyond the oceans to the west inspired the adventurer John Cabot to set sail in search of new territories on behalf of the King of England. In 1497, he reached the shores of Newfoundland, and a new era of European exploration and commerce began. Once it was discovered by Columbus and others that there were whole peoples on this continent that didn't know about Jesus Christ. From the earliest figures, like Samuel de Champlain, there is a strong missionary concern to bring the gospel to these people whom Christ loves. In 1534, Jacques Cartier arrived to explore this new world. Adapting the Indian name for village, Kanata, Jacques Cartier was the first to refer to this country as Canada. On July 20th, 1534, he raised a cross over the Gaspé Bay and claimed it for the French crown. Faith 
faith is woven throughout the history of Canada. It was even more important than commerce in the minds of most of the early European explorers and settlers. In 1608, Samuel du Champlain, considered the father of New France, sailed up the St. Lawrence to establish a trading post at the site of Quebec. A French Protestant, Champlain was eager to bring the gospel of Jesus to the peoples of Canada. There are somewhere in the order of 500 uh, tribal groups in the North American continent at the time of contact. The Mi'kmaq First Nations tribe, situated near the site of the first French settlement in Acadia, or present-day Nova Scotia, were among the first to welcome the Jesuit priests who came from France. The Jesuits' first convert was the Mi'kmaq Grand Chief, Henri Membertou. He was baptized June 24, 1610, and within a month, 140 more of his tribe were baptized. Thank you for joining with me today for this insightful interview with Paul Richardson. I want to remind you, if you want to get your hands on that book, you can go to Bible League Canada, BibleLeague.ca. Also want to remind you about the National Day of Prayer, July 1st, uniting online with believers from sea to sea. You can register, find out about it at NationalDayOfPrayer.ca. If you're watching this after July 1st, you can also watch the archives right there and pray alongside with it. The Canadian Firewall launching a 24-7 prayer room uh, for Canada. You can also find out about that there at nationaldayofprayer.ca or at canadianfirewall.ca. Uh, secondly, wanted to mention that if you appreciate this show or if you want to check out some of our other previous episodes, you can do that anytime um, on our website at faithteen.tv, on our Facebook page, on our YouTube page, or also on our free iPhone app. Uh, lastly, want to say another wholehearted thank you for all of you who've been standing with us as monthly partners as special donors through this COVID-19 very unique season. Uh, we deeply appreciate it as a nonprofit media organization. It's the individual contributions of people like you who love Canada, who want to see episodes like this continue that keep us going. So if you'd like to help uh, by donating or by joining the team on a monthly basis, you can do that by going to fateen.tv or by calling that 1-866 number right up there on the screen. Please feel no pressure, but we do appreciate any Thing that you can do. Thank you so much. We hope to see you guys next week. Have a great Canada Day. Have a great Canada Day week. God bless you and God bless your loved ones. <laughs> okay, ready? One, two, three. Happy Canada Day! Do you have a desire for you and your loved ones to grow spiritually? Check out resources by Fateen, her husband, and some of our guests online at the bookstore. When you shop, not only are you getting quality resources, but you're also helping support this ministry and program. Visit Fateen.tv today.